the birth of the technology. Bitcoin was created thanks to a movement of libertarians known as the cypherpunks. These were composed of cryptographers, programmers, and privacy activists, a group with one dream, that of creating an electronic cash system for the internet. It's important to understand that Bitcoin was not the first attempt of creating an online currency secured by cryptography. In 1989, the first electronic cash the world had ever seen was named DigiCash. This form of electronic cash, or e-cash, allowed for the possibility of private online transactions. A decade later, a computer engineer and cypherpunk named Wei Dai attempted a new electronic cash called B-Money. B-Money was an anonymous, distributed electronic cash system, but it also used contracts which allowed for bookkeeping and cryptography for digital signatures, otherwise known as public keys. This proposal shares a lot of properties with how Bitcoin functions today. As a matter of fact, Satoshi Nakamoto, the creator of Bitcoin, reached out to Wei Dai in order to create a more sophisticated form of B-Money's fundamental technology, giving birth to Bitcoin. So what made Bitcoin's technology different and therefore a more suitable form of online currency? One word, blockchain. Bitcoin was the very first form of a completely decentralized electronic cash, meaning that Bitcoin would not rely on any trusted third party in order to operate. Bitcoin created disintermediation and a real peer-to-peer -peer electronic form of cash, independent of any individual and completely outside of any banking system. The internet is entering a second era. And for 40 years, we've had an internet of information. Now we're getting an internet of value. What Bitcoin did in its first two years of existence is not replicatable. This is what makes it decentralized. It's not because some guy is funding a bunch of developers that made it decentralized. That's not how it works. It was decentralized because it was a grassroots effort, not knowing if it was ever going to have value. Uh, the fact that it was able to spread around the world, the fact that there are hard drives in landfills with thousands of Bitcoin on them is what made it decentralized. And no other coin will ever have that. Bitcoin uses blockchain technology as the backbone of its decentralized network. A simple way to look at the blockchain is that it is a digital ledger, which contains a record of every transaction ever made. An immutable, open ledger, which can never be altered, since there are thousands of computers across the world simultaneously confirming that the list of transactions has not changed, making Bitcoin the most secure and safest network ever created. Bitcoin's so simple. It's just a ledger, and it has to do a couple of things really well. One is it has to be as maximally decentralized as possible, which it does a pretty good job of. Secondly, it has to enforce the 21 million hard cap. All, everything else is a bonus. If it can do those two things, it means we don't have currency debasement with it, and anyone can send it to anyone. It's just beautifully simple, but what do you get off the back of that? You get people able to send money to people they need. You get a country able to defend itself against the US dollar in El Salvador. You get companies able to protect themselves against currency debasement, as well as individuals. You get people who are able to save. And it's just a beautiful thing. And all it is, is it's just a ledger. Yeah, I worked in banks. We would have loved to have had a system with 10 years with no, essentially no downtime. That's phenomenal. Yeah. There's no such thing. And to have such high amounts of transactions going through Bitcoin every, you know, every 10 minutes and to have never really gone down in 10 years is, is unheard of. And it, yeah, I think it's a sign of the hard work that many people have put through, whether that's the miners, the core devs, the people running nodes, the people running exchanges. It's, it's quite a compliment to achieve that. The genius of Bitcoin are its incentive models, which offer rewards to anyone who helps contribute to the security of the network. These people, who keep a copy of the Bitcoin ledger, are called miners. And mining is done through computing power. So, how do miners secure the network? 
they do so using a protocol called proof of work. Proof of work is a method that ensures that entering information onto a block is incredibly difficult to do, costly and time consuming. The Bitcoin network creates a mathematical problem for miners to solve. Miners use their advanced computers to compete in solving this cryptographic maths problem, offering guesses or hashes quintillions of times per second in order to eventually find that magic number. Once the number is found, the block is completed and the transactions become validated. The miner who finds the correct answer is then rewarded with some Bitcoin for their work. When you hear the term mining, 99.9% .9 of that is going to be what's called proof of work. So the algorithm, that gives you the decentralization, the part of the blockchain that's super clever, that enables it to maintain itself. That is done by allowing people to form a consensus opinion. Now, how do you know they're people? By doing something that's mathematically really, really complicated and solving a mathematical problem, you are proving that you are a real person, or in this case, a real machine. Something is actually being done. When you hear of hundreds of thousands of Bitcoin miners, actually what you've got is a handful, maybe of 20, 30 pools. These are the people that actually fill in the block template and submit the block template onto the blockchain. And lots and lots, hundreds of thousands, millions perhaps, of computers that are just trying to solve a simple sum. So they're huge prime numbers and there are some, as soon as somebody manages to solve it, they submit it to the pool and the pool goes, oh my goodness, this is great. This means we have solved a block. We, so we get the block reward and the block reward, 12 Bitcoin or whatever, gets paid out to the pool, which they then distribute to all these millions and millions of people. This is why you hear about people Bitcoin mining, Ethereum mining or whatever they're doing. They're mining because they would like to receive some cryptocurrency directly as it gets emitted by the blockchain. And why does the blockchain emit? Well, the blockchain emits because whoever uh, came up with Bitcoin in the first place realized if we make each block that gets added to the blockchain emit a reward in tokens, in Bitcoin, that encourages people to get involved and to be part of the Bitcoin network. So it's a self-rewarding system that also is self-policing. It's a secure system through consensus and distribution. One complaint about Bitcoin is that it required a lot of energy in order to find the answer to each question. However, some argue that the more energy that is used to secure the blockchain, the more secure it becomes, as it would require an almost impossible amount of energy for any individual to try and alter the chain. Between 2018 and 2019, Kuwait was among the cheapest countries to mine Bitcoin through renewable energy and solar power. The cost to mine one Bitcoin averaged between 1700 and 1900 USD. When it comes to concerns with energy consumption, it is key to understand that over 70% of Bitcoin mining comes from this renewable energy. What you do is you give every human being on the planet access to every financial network on the planet. I can do a bank transfer in any country in the world. And I do it here too, to pay my rent here in London. I don't have an English bank account yet. And my bank account in New York, Bank of America, won't let me do a wire internationally unless I'm physically in the branch. This is a big shot American bank, Bank of America, and they're that ghetto, believe that. Where do I do? I go into Paxful, I sell some Bitcoin, boom, deal is done. Isn't that beautiful? I can access any bank account in the world or any financial network in the world. I was in China, I, was I, had to, I wanted to charge my phone at a kiosk. They took Alipay or WeChat. I didn't have Alipay or WeChat account. Went into Paxful, sold some Bitcoin, the guy sent it for me, I gave him the QR code, done. What about the transactions in the blocks? Every transaction registered in the blocks are confirmed by the Bitcoin miners and a new block is created roughly every 10 minutes. Once the block is created, it is verified by every single person who is currently hosting the network, meaning that once everyone agrees for the block to be created, it cannot be changed. This is what makes the ledger decentralized. No individual person, nor miner as they are known, can make a change to the network without every other individual agreeing to make the change. This is what makes Bitcoin an immutable truth. The main thing about this is that individuals can independently take control of their finances 
and they can decide what software to run, which consensus rules to follow, and then they become a participant in the security of the system, that's empowering. So that's the most important thing to realize about this technology. What about Bitcoin's scalability for mass adoption? One of the biggest challenges for Bitcoin is to scale enough for one, billions of people to use, two, to process 100K transactions per second and therefore compete with centralized networks like Visa, and three, allow for microtransactions that are almost free to make. This is the main problem that everyone talks about. It's like, oh, it's not scalable enough. This is what, you know, the L2, the layer two solutions are trying to do on Ethereum. This is what like, you know, Avalanche, Solana, Polkadot, Cosmos, Radix, all of these layer ones are, are solving the problem of. But I think often we come at it from the wrong perspective. Like for years in the crypto industry where people are like, how can this be mainstream if we're not matching Visa, which is 2000 transactions per second? I, I kind of find that a bit hilarious because it's like measuring how much bandwidth we need. Like when the internet first came out, right? And you can imagine people are like, wow, we've got this network of computers that we can share information seamlessly, but like how much bandwidth do we need? The early ISPs trying to work out how much bandwidth they need. And it would be a little bit like trying to calculate how much bandwidth you need by working out how many telephone calls and faxes are being sent at the moment. And like you understand now, we understand intuitively that, that, that the bandwidth of telephone calls and faxes, nothing compared to what the internet actually represented. The internet was a wholesale rethinking of how information was shared. Right? And it was and it was millions of times the bandwidth was required from the information sharing that happened pre-internet to post-internet. We're at that precipice for the global financial system. If you go to the bank or Wales Fargo or anywhere else and try and send three dollars into South Africa or Rwanda or Philippines, Indonesia, if you try and send a small amount of money, you'll find that you, you're absolutely shut out if you don't use the existing banking system. And even in the banking system, you'll see the fees are massive. So crypto cuts that out. If you can pay somebody with crypto, all of a sudden, you don't need to have these monster fees that come with, with the international transfers. So some people have built side chains as a layer on top of Bitcoin so that you know you don't have to worry about Bitcoin transaction fees or block times and it's a, a faster transfer mechanism of Bitcoin. Unfortunately, decentralized networks that rely on transactions being made on chain are extremely difficult to scale as of today. This is because blockchains are considered flood networks, meaning in order for a transaction to be made, all previous transactions need to be checked and verified to assure that new payments are valid. Because of this, it is difficult to have decentralization, security and speed all together. Bitcoin is secure and decentralized, but those things come at a cost of speed. Luckily enough, we have secondary scaling solutions to solve this problem. One example of a scaling solution is the Lightning Network, which is a layer two payment protocol that enables fast transactions among participating nodes and has been touted as a solution to the Bitcoin scalability problem. It solves the problem of speed by allowing for many transactions to be made outside of the blockchain and then consolidated into a single transaction which reduces the amount of data being added to the blockchain in any given block, therefore allowing for more transactions to be made in a shorter amount of time. Lightning has kind of put another layer on top of Bitcoin where developers can come in and be creative. And that's why you've seen quite a lot of interest in the apps that have been built. But essentially Lightning, it's a way of caching transactions. I mean, I'm trying to talk about it at the highest level, but the way I see it is it's a cache on top of Bitcoin. Now you have payment channels which allow people to route messages across each other, but I've, I view them as all kind of caches. So few transactions are going to be done on chain because you can't scale on chain transactions. You got to scale them off chain. And off chain, Bitcoin has a dozen good proposals to give you privacy and fungibility as a second layer solution through wallets, through Lightning, through Liquid, and through lots of other innovations that are coming between Taproot and Bulletproofs and the latest in Schnorr signatures. Bitcoin will have sufficient privacy for the needs of consumers. 
In the last decade and since Bitcoin's birth, we have witnessed great progress in Bitcoin's technology, including mining efficiency, the proof-of-work mechanism, overall ease of use, Bitcoin's public persona, and therefore overall adoption. In the next decade, we look forward to seeing scaling solutions that allow Bitcoin to surpass the current financial system in terms of capabilities and usefulness to society. The possibilities of Bitcoin as a ubiquitous payment method that offers complete transparency and immutability are endless.